we have arrived. This is Webb Parton, your host, and we welcome you to the Free Range Dogs podcast. This is a place where we stake out a shady spot and talk about all things dog. Find yourself a soft piece of grass, spin a few circles, plop down, rest your feet, then join us in this joyful conversation. Hi, this is Webb Parton with the Free Range Dogs podcast, and I want to take care of some housekeeping today. I've been working a lot, <laughs> been awful busy uh, doing aversion work. It's that time of year when the, the, the snakes have coming out to play, and folks are getting a little bit nervous about it. And so as a consequence, the phone's been ringing, uh, and we've been getting uh, uh, messages coming across uh, through the website. And there's a lot of common questions that get asked, and one of the most frequent ones is that folks really don't understand what the training means or, or how it's going to take shape, how that's going to affect uh, the way they attend a class. So let's talk to, a little bit today about a snake class. Um, and, you know, I, I haven't advertised in a number of years. I guess uh, a, a website is advertisement. It's marketing of a sort. But that's relatively new. For the majority of my career, it was word of mouth, and uh, folks would hear from someone else, and then they would uh, get get back to me on it and, and uh, want to schedule a class. I've just been keeping a will call list, and when I get enough people on that list to put a class together, then I go ahead and structure a class. And just for point of reference, what a class means is about six dogs. Could be four, could be eight. It depends on the distance I have to try to drive. Depends on the the group. Six is a good number for an unrelated group of folks coming together. But let's say we have a class. It's a a, a kennel or a, a a dog group or a training organization. We can go up to eight. Now, four dogs takes about three hours. Six dogs takes about three and a half hours. Eight dog takes about four, four and a half hours. And the way a class is set up is that you will arrive at an appointed time. It is not a dog one, dog two, dog three sort of a process. We train collectively as a group. We in our limited human way can teach dogs things, but the most profound learning cues for canines are scent cues from other canines. And so we want a dog attending a class, not to have a singular experience, but to have a group experience, not to learn it one time, but to learn it four or six or eight times, depending on the number of dogs that are in the class. And so when you arrive, you are going to be engaged that entire time. There will be down times as we go from dog to dog, but it's within the different layers of the training process. And there, there is no first dog done, second dog done. We all start at the same time, and we all end at the same time. And I will provide everything while you're there. Uh, now, we will train in, in uh, areas to be announced. So the, the bulk of the trainings I do these days are at sportsman's warehouse stores. And, you know, I have to give a profound... Uh, shout out of thanks to Sportsman's Warehouse because for years, Sportsman's Warehouse has been very, very generous to allow me to work on their property. Sportsman's Warehouse stores have been the reason why literally thousands of dogs have been trained and they're safe and their people and their people's families are safe. So Sportsman's Warehouse has been a great place to work over the years. Now, what we'll typically do is meet at a location, and I will set aside a portion of the parking area. The stores typically have very large parking lots. They'll have landscape features in those parking lots. And uh, I will arrive early. I'll set up traffic cones to delineate a, a piece of that parking lot out. It will typically be somewhere towards the back or the sides of the stores, not in the front where the activity is, but in the back where it's nice and quiet and we can, can get our work done and, and not uh, complicate uh, the, the process of the store operating. And uh, I will set up those traffic cones 
I'll have a parking area set up for folks to come in so that they're not in that area where we need to be training. I will set up a line of chairs. Depending on the sort of dogs we're working with, I do have the option of running a chain gang out. So typically folks sit in a chair and they have their dog on a lead and they control their dog. But let's say someone has three dogs or we have, you know, groups of folks with multiple dogs. Then I have the option of setting up a a chain gang with multiple drop clips so that we can control any amount of dogs that we need to control. If a person is alone and they want to have their three dogs trained, they don't necessarily have to have two other folks to help them. We will we'll be able to control the dogs and we'll be able to get that training done. Okay. Uh, now, we will set the time of the class. And, you know, often my classes start very early and there's a reason for that. And folks, ideally, they'd, they'd love to start at 10 a.m. and, you know, work till 2. Um, the issue is temperature. And when we do this training, the most important part of this process is, can the dog smell the snake? It's about the ability of the dogs to discern the snake at a distance. Never see it, never hear it. That means that we have to have ambient temperatures that will allow that to take place. And what happens with air, when when you have scent and your dog is smelling a thing, what they're smelling is, is uh, particulates of the thing that, that you want them to smell. Those molecules of scent bond with molecules of moisture in the air, and that then uh, infused zone of, uh, uh, of scent is sent down range, and your dogs pick that up and smell it. Now, that means that the air has to be cool enough and wet enough to carry that scent. And the best bird dog in the world at high noon at 95 degrees cannot smell a quail. So we set up the the class times to take advantage of the, the atmospheric conditions that we need to be able to get that scent message across to our dogs right now. That means that it doesn't matter what time we start the training. What's important is what time we stop the training. Because if we start at 6 a.m., we are wrapping up at 10 a.m. And that is when we're doing our most critical scent work. And so I will set the time for a class looking at what the weather forecasts are going to tell us and looking at how big the group is and how much time it's going to take. So you have to bear with me because I know that sometimes our classes are pretty, pretty early. And, you know, I will provide everything. I'll have chairs set up. The only thing you need to worry about is having a lead to control your dog. And if you don't have that, I'll have that available too. You just, you know, we just need to figure out what we need to do to get this done. Uh, So the best way to contact me is typically a phone call. 520-465-3460. You can also contact me through freerangedogs.com. Leave a message, and if, if I don't get back with you nearly immediately, I will be, get back with you as quick as I can. Often I'm working for portions of a day when I just can't see the digital world. So do bear with me, but if you do reach out, I will get back with you, uh, and I'll follow that up with typically a phone call or a text message. And we will communicate, uh, and often, typically, I'll gather your information. I'll put you on that will call list. I may have a time at that point when I'm talking with you, when I know I have a class coming up, or I will tell you about when I'm going to put one together, depending on what I have interest-wise on that will call list for your area. So I do look forward to working with you, uh, to helping you and your dog stay safe. And, you know... I uh, I was a gun dog trainer for many years. More years than that, I was a quail guide. So I spent literally several thousand days in the field behind bird dogs in snake country. And during that time period, I've had the benefit of watching dogs come upon snakes, the dogs that I've trained. And it's truly amazing how effective a dog's nose is because they can smell a snake at a distance. And I know my dogs in the field 
I don't know how many snakes my dogs would have found in a lifetime of of guiding quail hunters, but it would certainly be dozens, multiple dozens. You would see them come in, hit that scent cue, know it was the smell of a rattlesnake, and drift, go the other way. Never saw it, never hear it. Now, during that same time period, there were literally three dozen times when I watched a dog go in on a rattlesnake. Again, a dog I trained, and I watched them and saw that the scent piece of the training failed for them at that instant. And it could have been midday, air hot, no scent cue coming to them, wind was non-existent, nothing to smell. Could be they were running an objective. We were headed back to a truck, and there was a water bucket there, and they were not working air at that point. They were just running toward an objective. But even when that happens, they still have to interact with that snake. Typically, a dog has to do something to get in trouble. They have to linger. They have to show curiosity. And once a dog has gone through this training, they will never linger on a snake again. And, you know, there's an additional benefit, too, because I know often folks are really terrified of snakes. uh, And I see that in trainings. Folks will come in. But, you know, almost to a person, once something is Someone has gone through a class with me, and they've spent that that amount of time interacting, being able to observe the snake, being able to to observe our interactions with the snake. They feel better about rattlesnakes. They feel safer about rattlesnakes. They lose that that abstract fear of rattlesnakes, and they realize that you know they're really pretty innocuous creatures. They really do. It's an old adage but they really do just want to be left alone. So if we can find a way for your dog to know that thing is there and leave it alone, then everybody wins in the process. So with that, if you do have a concern about snakes and your dog getting hurt or family member, uh, and and be aware that the benefit of of a trained dog is that they become an early warning system to let you and your family know there's a snake there. Okay, if you would like to do that training, do contact me. I look forward to talking with you. We will get you on schedule and get you set up and get you into a class. Now, I know there are there are not many folks that do this work. Uh, and the, of the few that do, they'll have a euphemism. And the euphemism will be uh, retrain, recheck, retry, re-something. Okay? I'm almost 40 years in on, on this sort of work. And... If you give me a dog for three hours, four hours, that dog will be trained for the rest of its life. I don't need to see you again. We don't need to do this again. So uh, the retrain is a non-issue. I will do the best I know to do to make sure that you and your dog are safe. And I look forward to spending the time with you and meeting you. Uh, With that, um, I'm thinking of helping you in the future. This is Webb Parton with Free Range Dogs Podcast. Uh, do contact me. And if you enjoy these these podcasts that we put out and the blogs we put out, please do subscribe. It does help us because it gets our numbers up and it helps us uh, plan for the future and, and see what we, we want to do and how we want to do it. So if you are enjoying these podcasts, please do hit that subscribe button and uh, show us that. With that, I'm wishing you a great day and I'm hoping you have a great time with your dog out on the free range running and enjoying the air and having a great butterfly hunt. (laughs) Take care. Thank you. This is Webb signing out. If you like this episode, I invite you to visit our website, freerangedogs.com. It's where you can find the stuff you need to live the free range dog lifestyle. I want to help you with that. Book a consultation call or an in-person training attend one of our ongoing events, or join our online membership program. We got it all on freerangedogs.com. All right, it's time to head back to the truck and the water bucket for the thirsty dogs. This is Webb Parton signing off, wishing you the boundless joy that comes when you share the outdoors with your best friend.